In this video, you're going to learn how to solve for the inverse trig angle on the restricted domain. So we're going to go through quite a few examples and we're going to be referencing the unit circle here. So let's dive into this video. So what we want to do here is we want to find out what is the sine inverse of negative one half. And what this is really asking us is saying sine of what angle equals negative one half. Now, when we talk about restricted domain, see the sine could be negative one half over here, okay, or over here, or you could go around the unit circle, you know, many times and end up over here, over here, and still get a value of negative one half. So you see how you're getting multiple answers, but in order for it to be a function, we want for that input there just to be one output, meaning we will only want one answer. So to solve this question here, sine of what angle equals negative one half, when you're working with sine, the domain is restricted from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. This way you're only gonna get one answer. And remember on the unit circle, the sine is the referring to the y coordinate. So we say, hmm, where is y equal to one half, or I'm sorry, negative one half? That's gonna be at negative pi over six. Now, just some pointers here. Sometimes students will say, well, Mario, how come you didn't say this is like 330 degrees or 11 pi over six? Well, you wanna be from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So if you end up in the fourth quadrant, you're gonna to wanna to make that a negative angle. Now, you probably remember uh, or learned already in your class like how to graph sine, and sine looks something like this, right? And you can see how it fails that horizontal line test that would cross more than once. So mathematicians, they decided, well, let's just restrict it over here from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. That way it'll pass the horizontal line test. We'll only get one answer. So that's what this first one is. So let's go to the next one. So letter B, what's the cosine inverse of negative root three over two? Or another way of saying this is cosine of what angle equals negative root three over two? Well, remember the cosine on the unit circle is referring to the x value, right? So we're really saying, where is x negative root three over two? Well, it would be here or over here, but on the restricted domain for cosine, we're just looking at from zero to pi. So just to draw a little graph of cosine, cosine looks like this, right? Okay, it keeps going, right? But you see how it fails the horizontal line test? So what mathematicians decided to do is they said, let's restrict the domain from here to here. So from zero to pi. And if we do that, that's gonna put us in the first and second quadrant. We're only gonna get one answer. So remember, sine inverse, we're from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Cosine inverse, we're from zero to pi. So Again, to answer this question, cosine of what angle equals negative root three over two, that occurs right here at five pi over six. So that's our angle, that's our answer. For letter C now, what's the tangent inverse of negative one? Tangent is really saying, where is the ratio of the y divided by the x equal to negative one? And that's gonna occur right here because a negative root two over two divided by positive root two over two, that's negative one. It would also occur over here but for tangent, the restricted domain is from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, same as sine. So let's go ahead and draw a little picture of our tangent graph. We know tangent looks like this. It has those asymptotes at negative pi over two and positive pi over two, but it also repeats, you know, it keeps, keeps going. So it would fail that horizontal line test unless we restrict it from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So you wanna remember sine and tangent kind of go together. Negative pi over two to positive pi over two, Cosine inverse is kind of a little different. It's from zero to pi in the first and second quadrants. But to answer our question, where is tangent negative one? That's gonna be right here at negative pi over four. Now again, you don't wanna say, oh, that's 315 degrees or seven pi over four. You just wanna make it when you're in the fourth quadrant a negative angle. Okay, let's go to the next one. What's the sine inverse of negative root three over two? So remember, sine is referring to the the y, maybe let's make a little note here if you're studying, sine is like the y, cosine is like the x, tangent is like the y divided by the x, right? So sine of what angle equals negative root three over two is saying where is the y coordinate negative root three over two, that's right here, and that's gonna be negative pi over three. Okay, let's go to the next one, our cosine of negative one. Now you can see we're switching notation from this little minus one that represents the inverse to using this other way of writing uh, cosine inverse, we call that arc cosine. It's the same thing, cosine inverse, arc cosine. It's really asking us cosine of what angle equals negative one. Again, remember cosine is the x, 
So that's going to occur negative 1 right here at pi, so pi radians. How about for letter F now, arc tangent of root 3? So again, we know tangent's the y over x. Where is the y over x equal to root 3? Well, that's going to be right here at pi over 3. And why is that? Well, see, when you take root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, if I multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, that's like multiplying by 1, see how the 2's cancel and you get root 3 over 1? So that's going to be uh, pi over 3 for this one. For letter G, we've got the arc sine of negative 1. So that's saying the sine inverse of negative 1, or the sine of what angle equals negative 1. And that's going to occur right here. So remember, sine is the y-coordinate. And that's at negative pi over 2. Again, you don't want to go all the way around here and say 3 pi over 2 or 270. You want to say uh, negative pi over 2 because we're down there going this way. Okay, so negative pi over 2. And let's see if you can do these other ones on your own. You might want to practice, maybe take a screenshot and see if you can try to do these. We're going to go through them together. But I just wanted to let you know, I'm wearing my uh, unit circle t-shirt here today in honor of this video. So if you want to support the channel, this is kind of a nice way of doing that. I'll have a link in the description or you might even see these uh, t-shirts listed below the video. But I'll have a link to my Teespring store where you can... Uh, purchase one of these videos, um, one of these t-shirts with the unit circle on it and support the channel. I really appreciate that. So let's do these uh, last ones here if you haven't already. Arc cosine of negative one half is saying cosine of what angle equals negative one half. Remember the cosine is the x coordinate. So we're saying where is the x coordinate negative one half? Again, remember uh, arc cosine is restricted from zero to pi on the first and second quadrants here. That's gonna be right here at two pi over three. And the arc tangent of zero now, so this is saying tangent of what angle equals zero. Remember, tangent's y over x, so where would tangent be equal to zero? That's going to be right here. Zero over one is zero. See y divided by x. It's also true over here, but remember, tangent's restricted from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So let's, uh, this is going to be zero radians or zero degrees. For letter j, the sine inverse of negative root two over two, sine of what angle equals negative root two over two, Sine is the y-coordinate. Sine is restricted from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And so that's going to occur at negative pi over 4. See, so like a negative 45 degrees. Okay, a couple more. Uh, our cosine is 0. Cosine of what angle equals 0? Well, cosine we know is the x-coordinate. Where is x equal to 0? That's going to be right here at pi over 2 radians. And again, remember the cosine is restricted from zero to pi. So in the first and second quadrants, arc tangent of one, tangent of what angle equals one, tangent is the y over x. That would be at root two over two divided by root two over two. Anything divided by itself is one. So that's gonna be pi over four. Okay, and remember tangent's restricted from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And the last one, arc sine of root three over two, sine, remember, is the y coordinate. Where is the y-coordinate root 3 over 2? That's going to be right here. Of course, it's right here too, but sine, arc sine is restricted from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, these two quadrants. If you're here, make sure you make it a negative angle. And we want to know where the y-coordinate is root 3 over 2. That's right here at pi over 3 radians. So great job if you're able to follow all these examples. If you want to see another video that I did talking about these inverse trig uh, functions and finding the angles, Follow me over to that video I did right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.